It's a beautiful tree. It is. Douglas fir, I think. I think, I think you're right. It's this wonderful time of year. Your mother sucks blanks in hell. Merry Christmas from Pina Comics and Connecticut Cult Classics. Stay tuned for this video. All right, Pine Comics here. Every two months since, I think, 2016, Connecticut Cult Classics, ConnecticutCultClassics.com, check them out, have a double feature play here at the Strand Theater in Seymour, Connecticut. And tonight is, uh, what is tonight? The Power of Christmas Compels You. So if you know what that is, you know that's a play on a little phrase from a movie called The Exorcist. Tonight is officially The Exorcist, the 1971, is that 71? The 19, early 70s horror classic, which I fully admit have only seen once in my life, and I'm actually a little nervous about watching it again tonight because there's not a lot of movies that actually scare me. This movie scared the crap out of me. Uh, following that, you're going to get tons of awesome trailers before and after. Uh, a great atmosphere where right now it's empty because we're here about an hour before anything even starts. Uh, and then immediately after The Exorcist and after the raffle, which if you look up there, we have some great raffle prizes that, uh, that people always bring. You got the awesome Christmas tree. Uh, Exorcist 3. So Exorcist 3 is considered uh, the good Exorcist sequel. Uh, the reason they're skipping Exorcist 2 is because nobody liked it. And uh, apparently it would not go over very well with the crowd. Uh, I have seen it. I do remember it not being very good. So we're going to just go through the Strand Theater, talk to some of the folks from Connecticut Cult Classics, and, uh, and see what they do, and give you a taste of what you could be doing uh, once every two months here in Seymour, Connecticut for an unbelievable cost of only $10. All right, Manster and Ganache here at Connecticut Cult Classics, December 14th, 2019. May the power of Christmas compel you. And we are chilling out with two of the guys from Connecticut Cult Classics, uh, also heavily involved in CT Horror Fest, heavily involved in HorrorNewsNetwork.net. We've got Mike Simonetta. Mike, what's going on? Hello, everybody. And Mike, what is your, your role here? You're, you're kind of like, you're kind of the programmer, right? Well, I'm the guy behind the scenes. Uh, we, after we figure out what trailers we're going to have, what movies we're going to watch, et cetera. I go get them, edit them all together, put it together. Uh, what we try to do, which you guys probably recognize, is make it like a real uh, movie. You know, we, we're watching trailers. We're at, you know going in. There's little uh, snippets about, you know, be quiet, turn your cell phones off, et cetera. So, questionable popcorn. Yes, questionable popcorn. <laughs> Way too much salt. Hey. But everybody eats it. Yeah. So what are you going to do? What are you going to do? All right. And Sean, Shawnee Mac, who has been on the show a couple times now. Recently subjected us to, at this point, by the time you see this, probably next week's episode, made us watch, which I had never seen before, the Star Wars Holiday Special. Oh. So Sean holds a special place in my heart, the, play, the place where I hate everybody. Um, <laughs> Sean, Sean is a, is a staff writer. You're talking to me, I'll be honest. Like, what? I, I, you know, you and Larry look alike. I thought you were Larry when I asked you to come up here, and then I realized it was you. Uh, so yeah, I kind of hate Sean, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, he doesn't have the tattoos, he's got the beard. Uh, Sean, you are a staff writer for Horror News Network, right? Yes, that's correct, yeah. What do, you, do you specialize in like reviews? What what is your what's your thing? Yeah, well, mainly news, getting the news up there, reviews, things like that. We also cover events like uh, Toy Fair. Larry and I will do Toy Fair, um, things like that. We'll do write ups for for this Connecticut Cold Classics. So it's basically whatever is needed. Jack of all trades, both of these guys. Gal Friday, I like to gal like, Friday? Gal consider Friday. myself a Gal Friday. Oh, wow. My Gal Friday, come over here, Shawnee. On the weekend, Gal. <laughs> come over here, Shawnee Mac. I need I, I need to go check something out for me. <laughs> um, all right, so you guys have been have both of you been involved with the cult classics since the first show. Yes, yes, yes that's yes. correct. So now th I've been coming. The, my first show was Friday the thirteenth, uh, two and three, and that was I think maybe the third or fourth show. So I missed out on the first year. So since the first year, I'm assuming let's just say there's been maybe. 20 plus of these nights now, maybe maybe 15 to 20, uh, th uh, you know, uh, five times a year, six times a year. So, um, and if either of you say Lady Terminator Predator, I'm immediately going to kick you off of the stairs on this stage. Oh, um, <laughs> I do, I do want to know, what was your, so far, and you guys have done some awesome nights, they've all been fun no matter what, but what movie pairing or what was maybe the best night for you, just, it was a great night, best movie pairing, what did you dig the most? Well, I was going to say Lady Terminator. No, but no, seriously, no, seriously. I loved how divisive it was. I know you didn't find it funny. I know you couldn't stand it, but I thought it was it was fun and it got to the heart of what we wanted to do when we started it, you know, cult classic. It is it is a cult movie that you've it's never seen cut. before. It's a, it's a deep cut. cut. Yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, for me, the John Carpenter Nights, I never actually got to see 
outside of They Live, I never saw anything in the theater. So to finally get to see, you know, things like The Thing, uh, Big Trouble, Little China uh, up on a big screen, it's it's just amazing. Did you prefer one of the two nights over the other? The Thing, it, yeah. it holds a special place in my heart. Thing, Thing, Big Trouble was, I think, the second one I went to, and that was awesome. Yes. Yeah. I mean, The Thing is just a perfect movie, and Big Trouble is fun. Uh, you know, sure, it's questionable in this day and age, but still. <laughs> but but the thing is just perfect, so to see it on the big screen is amazing. All right, Sean, I want to hear you. All right, so I'm going to go with the original, which is uh, Fright Night. Um, it was uh, Fright... I'm sorry, Bite Night. I already screwed that up. That's Bite funny. Night. <laughs> it's uh, Fright Night and um, uh, Lost Boys. So it was a great pairing. The reason why I liked it, that was the genesis of this. Like, we're here, what, four years later, still doing this. You know, Larry yeah. took that. And ran with it, and every two months now he's here, and uh, it was just it was the first one. I know Mike doesn't appreciate it as much because more in the technical aspect didn't really go as smoothly. Well, I got to be honest. The first night I came, in, and I didn't judge anybody by this. I thought it was a lot of fun. I came for Friday the Thirteenth two and three. Friday the Thirteenth three starts, and it's in Spanish for the first fifteen minutes. And you know what? The audience loved it. You know, it, it's this beginning scene with like this bickering old couple in a grocery store or something like it, and it's just you know sabado do mucho, and it, like and 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 plus it's in three D, so it, everything was disoriented. It was it was a great time. Now I did see you when he said Lady Terminator, who's defending. I saw you shake your head. How are you not on the bandwagon with that piece of crap movie? <laughs> I am not, but I. It's not like th this wasn't the first time I saw it here. I saw it previously, so I kind of was already biased against it. You know what, though, I, I kind of don't mind that you had to sit through that twice after the Star Wars holiday special. Oh. Uh, <laughs> uh, all right. But, but that had dialogue as opposed to fifteen twenty minutes of of grunting. Uh, what 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, itchy, lumpy. Uh, uh, the the the, uh, the weird chair that we're not going to talk about on the video. <laughs> Lloyd, now you've yeah. been coming, Lloyd, for a while. I, I, let's yeah. ask you: uh, Do you have a particular night that was uh, was special for Connecticut Call Classics? Yeah, you know what? I think my favorite one was the Evil Dead, Evil Dead One, and then uh, Army of Darkness. That was that was a good night. Yeah, that was a good night. That was I, th I think that was a night that we had a guy here that there was an issue with. Uh, <laughs> we'll we'll gloss that over. But and and these are always fun, family friendly nights for for people that can handle horror movies. Um, me personally, I think I'm going to go with. Uh, I think my favorite might have been my first Friday the Thirteenth Two and Three because it introduced me to this whole thing and and uh, and like the, the the sense of community you guys have going on here. You know, you see the same people over and over again. It almost doesn't seem like uh, for me, it doesn't seem like the movies really matter in terms of like I don't know if a lot of people are looking at it going. Maybe you feel differently, like oh, okay, they're going to do um, the Warriors and, uh, and and Foxy Brown. I'm not going to go to that. Do you do you tend to see that? We get a little bit of that, um, but we have a good core audience yeah. that, that comes down and they enjoy what we do. We look forward to seeing whatever wacky trailers we can dig up. Um, you know, and then we have a lot of great giveaways, and it's just a, it's a great time. You know, I go back to what you know, he was saying Bite Night was the first, but that was actually the first night, um, and Larry and I didn't run it, so we gave it to the, the Knights of Columbus, and they were like, you know, we'll play the movie, we'll play the trailers. They screwed all of it up. <laughs> and we immediately were like, nope, we're, we're going to take over. That's, the, you know, and that next time uh, Larry was up front uh, announcing, I was in the back getting everything going, and it's just been great since then. All right, one more quick question. Is there a movie that either of you guys have kind of talked to Larry about more than once to play, and he keeps either ignoring you or flat out saying no that you really want to see here? I have a couple. Give me, give me a couple. <laughs> so one is um, <laughs> have a Corey's night. Okay. Oh. Okay. Um, he likes Dream a Little Dream. My favorite's uh, License to Drive. So pair that up. There you go. There's, there's Corey's night. He already did Lost Boys, or else I'd say Lost Boys. Um, but the second one is Monster Squad. I love that movie, and he makes fun of me for loving it. So. <laughs> I don't think he's ever going to show it. We'll see. All right, what do you got, Mike? Uh, actually, tonight's the night that I've been pushing for for a while. So uh, the, tonight is Exorcist 1, Exorcist 3. Uh, we've talked about it before. I love Exorcist 3. Almost nobody knows about it. But, you know, for Halloweens and stuff, he's like, you know, we should have big classic movies. And I'm like, we really should play The Exorcist. But, uh, you know, he, he was always trying to go back to the Halloween franchise. Now that we're up to four, I think we're done. But... Um, I'm really excited to have because I think a lot of people are not going to have seen three and it's it's great I saw in the theaters like 30 years ago, and this will be my second time. So I'm excited about it It's still I've said it before we talked about it, it has maybe the I still remember there's a jump scare in it That is still in my head from 30 years ago uh, So so that's it Mike Simonetta and uh, Shawnee Mack here hanging out with us and uh Pine of Comics, we'll talk to you soon. We're inside the Strand Theater. We're about 20 minutes away from the, uh, the start of the show. So why don't we just go ahead and take a walk into the theater and take a look at the historic 
Strand Theater in Seymour, Connecticut, 1929. Wait, let's go. go. Is Die Hard a Christmas movie? And then I have a second part to that question. Yes. All right. Yes. Why? Yeah, why? Okay, so, like, yes, it takes place on Christmas, and you can argue, like, well, yeah, a lot of movies can take place on Christmas, but the whole idea of it is that he's trying to make it home to be with his family, and isn't Christmas all about, like, being with your family? So it's encompassing the, like, spirit of Christmas, as well as being, you know, set on Christmas. Yes. Christmas Eve, right? I think, is it? Now, by osmosis, this is something nobody ever talks about. Does that mean Die Hard 2 is also a Christmas movie because Die Hard 2 takes place one year later exactly? By the same arguments, I think you have to say yes. Yeah, I, I will have to say yes with those same arguments in place. Christmas movie or not? No, Lethal Weapon is a Christmas movie. <laughs> The Weapon is the quintessential action Christmas movie. Can you fucking believe? I was just telling someone about that outside. I was talking I've, about it. I've always subscribed to that thought. I think Die Hard is too, but nobody gives Lethal Weapon credit. Right, no. It absolutely does not get enough credit. Not like that guy. Ken Guard, everybody. Let's move on. <laughs> Die Hard, Christmas movie or no? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Lethal Weapon, yes or no? Yeah, it was done during Christmas time, sure. Love this guy. Can I ask you guys a quick question? Yeah. Real quick. Sure. All right. Have you been coming to Cult Classics for a while? This is our second time. Okay. Which show did you see first? Uh, the one with Bubba, Bubba Hotep. Did you enjoy it? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. All right. Die Hard. Christmas movie, yes or no? Christmas yes. movie, yes. Absolutely. I agree. Gremlins. Christmas yes. movie, yeah. Christmas movie. Have you ever thought about Lethal Weapon as a Christmas movie? Uh, yes, I have. I'm on the fence. On the fence. Yeah. On the fence. Never. You look like you never saw Lethal Weapon. You're a young guy. I don't think I played it. For can you do? Can you do me a favor? Can he see Lethal Weapon before Christmas? It'll be on our thing. All right. Thank you. From uh, HorrorNewsNetwork.net, CT Horror Fest, all that good stuff. What has been your favorite show so far that you've seen here? What was the best lineup for you for CT Call Classics? Mm, that's a tough one. Uh, this one I think is really cool, but I've got to say uh, it's probably the uh, Halloween. The first one? The first one, yeah. That was definitely my favorite. I think it's the greatest horror movie of all time, and seeing it on the big screen was awesome. Yeah, because you're of the age like me. You probably didn't see it on the, the big screen. No, no. I was a little too young for that, so I think I would have been I was probably like three or four at that time, so uh, seeing it here on the big screen was awesome. Okay. Three quick questions, all related to Christmas movies. Okay. Die Hard, yes or no, Christmas movie? Yeah. Okay. Gremlins? Yes, definitely. The one that is like is on the fence. I've always believed it is a Christmas movie. The original, 1987, Lethal Weapon. Think about the movie. Yeah, yeah. Right? I, I'd say so. Okay. I'm, my mission tonight is to get everybody to say, at least maybe. Yeah, no, I, I could see it. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, definitely. All right. We're about to head in. The movie's about to start. I'm a little nervous. I might be holding Lloyd's hand throughout the first, I don't know, maybe two hours of the first movie, maybe through the, uh, the second movie as well. Maybe I'll move on to holding something different by the end of the second movie. That's a whole different thing. Uh, Connecticut Cult Classics is an awesome time at the movies. Lloyd, if you weren't even part of the pint, if you had heard about this, would this be something that you would, you would get yourself involved in and do all the time? Well, as a matter of fact, before I was part of the pint, I was doing this all the time. So you got to come on down and do this. $10, two movies. Always two great movies, and uh, let me show you this one here, right there, Undead Date Night, February 15th, bring your date, especially if they're in a spooky shit, Reanimator, the, uh, the film about Herbert West, played by Jeffrey Combs, crazy dude, weird scene with a dismembered head I don't want to talk about on a video, and the 1986 cult classic, Night of the Creeps, with, uh, with Tom Atkins, right, he plays yeah. the, uh, he answers the phone in that movie by saying, thrill me. It's odd, <laughs> but uh, it's a good time. And uh, speaking of good times, we're going to go and watch the movie. Thank you for hanging with us. Get your tickets to this www.connecticutcultclassics.com. Pine of Comics. We out.